Welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic weekend so far, staying healthy, staying strong, and staying optimistic. In this class, we are looking at IELTS speaking part three, and we're going to practice for those band nine marks, discussing the steps and the strategy to get there. And of course, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. And for the general IELTS, please visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve your English and your communication. Hi, Rums. Hi, Eldor. Hi, Amrik. Welcome, Pichu. Hello to you as well. Good to see many students in the class. Nice to see our members. Hi, Rajveer. Hi, Honey. Hi, Rashika. Good to see everyone. Okay, uh, just going to show you the websites here real quick. This is our Academic IELTS website here with the blue background. I'll show you where you can practice your English with other students for free. So if you go to our website, aehelp.com, uh, and you create an account, you will have a My Student account. You can um, go into your My Student account, and in your My Student account, you'll have the computer-based practice exams, lesson videos, and you will also see this button here, the Student Partner Speaking. So you can click on that Student Partner Speaking, and it will open up a new window for you. And in that new window, uh, you will find some other students. Right now we have Ken Fak, Raj, Nancy, uh, Guzalia, Hassan, and me in here. And you can uh, audio chat, you can video chat, you can text and say hi first. Uh, and then once you do that, you'll be able to uh, chat with them and practice your IELTS speaking. Of course, here you can uh, choose some IELTS scripts with questions about objects, people, uh, places, and so on. So definitely check that out on our general IELTS website. Same idea. If you click that red button, you can get uh, access to our premium package. And then up at the top, you can access your My Student account and join the uh, speaking. Okay, let me brighten up our lives here a little bit. And we'll get into today's lesson. But again, that's really important. It's absolutely free, by the way. So 100% uh, free uh, for the student speaking part of the website. Definitely check it out. Okay. Forever Neuro123, good luck on your speaking exam tomorrow, and I'm glad that you're in this class as well, okay? Uh, Sandeep, if you're not able to connect with another student, it might be because there's certain restrictions, um, or it sounds like you haven't enabled your microphone on your computer. So make sure that uh, your internet settings, you enable your audio and your microphone for the website. Usually more, most browsers ask uh, to enable the microphone, okay? So check your internet settings, and there should be a function there where you can say, okay, allow this website to use my microphone and uh, my headset, okay? So check that out, okay? If you have problems with any part of the website or you have any questions, um, just uh, send me an email, and I can help you out, okay? Adrian at aehelp.com. So, yeah, Amrik says it works fantastic. Okay, good. Bajay, you did your listening, re reading, and writing test today. Good. I'll keep my fingers crossed for you that it, you get a great mark, Bajay. It's fantastic. I know you've been studying really hard. All right, everyone. So uh, speaking part three right now, and then uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, Tuesday, as usual, we take a short break. And then on Wednesday, the 20th, I'm back with speaking part one. Okay? So... Uh, make sure you join. Okay, everyone. So today is speaking part two, speaking, sorry, speaking part three. So we're doing speaking part three right now. Uh, speaking part three uh, follows from speaking part two. And we just did uh, speaking part 
uh, to class uh, an hour ago, uh, which uh, was uh, talking about a time when you were scared. Now, speaking part three relates to speaking part two. So we're going to do uh, just a really brief uh, review of our part two answer, and then we'll get into the speaking part three questions, okay? So here we go from the top. This is, again, practice and review before we get into our speaking part three. And it's important. You'll see why. So make sure to speak and repeat, okay? Here we go, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, a time when I was absolutely terrified was back in mid-May of 2019 when I went on a school field trip to the Indian Ocean with my grade 12 class. I was amazed at the beautiful scenery of Goa Beach with all of the palm trees, the golden sand, and the deep blue ocean. We stayed in bungalows along the beach with, my, with 20 of my classmates and three teachers um, for three nights and four days. I was extremely scared on the first day of activities since I'm not a strong swimmer and I'd never swam in the open ocean before them. I was really terrified of the big waves and for good reason. It only took about half an hour before a large wave caught my feet and pulled me into the ocean. I tried to hold my breath as long as I could, but the wave kept pulling me under. Eventually, I swallowed some seawater and started choking. At one moment, I thought I was done for and I would become fish food uh, for the sharks and other sea animals. Luckily, a lifeguard saw me and pulled me out onto the beach. The next day, our whole class was expected to go snorkeling, and I was shaking at the knees. Eventually, I worked up enough courage to join the group, and I ended up having a lot of fun. In the end, I look back on this experience with pride. I've learned to respect the power of the ocean and also to be more careful when dealing with a new and dangerous situation. Also, I'm proud of myself that I didn't give up, and since then, I've become a much stronger swimmer. Okay. Uh, Ismanov, your two minutes is up. I'll stop you there. You can now uh, put the card and the note paper to the side, and we'll continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you a couple more questions related to your response and some more questions on this topic. And so what the IELTS examiners do while you're speaking is they're marking you, and they're also thinking about a couple of questions to ask you about what you said in part two. So instead of me telling you, let me ask you, what do you think is a simple, logical question that your examiner might ask you at this point? So after this response, what do you think the examiner might write down on their paper to ask you at the end here? Okay. So what, what could be a typical question? And it's going to be directly related to what you just said. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lichika Mutha says, how did you overcome your fear? Fear, okay, very good, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's possible. How did you overcome your fear of the ocean the next day when you went snorkeling? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's very possible. Okay, good. Here we go. Uh, what do you think uh, could be a good answer for this? So I see some other questions. I'll take a look at those as well. Uh, let's answer this one together. I think this could be very well one of the questions the examiner might follow up with. So how did you overcome your fear of the ocean the next day uh, when you went snorkeling? Okay, um, what could you answer for that? 
So give me a nice answer explanation. You're going to have to be quick here. Okay. All right. So it's going to be directly related to your response. So expect this kind of relevant question. Okay. All right. Give me a nice full sentence answer here. So one more time. How did you overcome your fear of the ocean the next day when you were snorkeling? I definitely have a few ideas in my head to answer for this. Okay, uh, so Ferdov says, I did yoga at night and it helped me escape my fear. All right, Ferdov, it's kind of an interesting answer. Okay. I'd like to see some more. Okay. If the image is blurry, Zynep, change your resolution to 720 on your computer. Okay, so Hunter says, I took a couple of long, deep breaths. Sure. Well, first, I took a couple of long, deep breaths breaths okay good yeah so that's definitely one way that we overcome fears first we just calm down we take a couple of deep breaths okay hollywood explainer says i watched some surfing videos on screen okay i'm um, sure then i watched a couple of uh instructional videos on YouTube about how to snorkel in a safe way. Sure. Okay. Good. Yeah, very good, Sweet Gagan. So Sweet Gagan says, my tutor encouraged me uh, to master my thoughts and overcome my fear. Um, also, The tour guide and my friends gave me a lot of encouragement, which helped uh, me to uh, conquer my uh, fear of the water. Okay, very good. Yeah, so think fast. And uh, keep it simple, okay? Simple isn't easy. You have to practice, but keep it simple, okay? Uh, here we go. So repeat after me. How did you overcome your fear of the ocean the next day when you went snorkeling? Well, firstly, I took a couple of long, deep breaths. Then I watched some instructional videos on YouTube about how to snorkel in a safe way. And then the tour guide and my friends also gave me a lot of encouragement, which helped me to conquer my fear of the water, Fantastic. Okay, that's exactly how that works in your IELTS exam when you give this kind of a response. All right, um, let's see what another question is. Usually the examiners will ask one more often two uh, questions. I see some other good ideas. Some of you said by talking about my experience to my friends, that's a really good way to overcome fear as well. So managing your fears or facing your fears Okay, that's a common expression. Uh, facing your fears uh, is a really good idea, especially when it comes down to swimming. Okay. All right. Um, so Rajveer says, uh, what was the reaction of other students for this trip? Might be another one. Uh, Carolina says, what would you have done if you saw a shark? Uh, scream and run for the ocean or run for the beach. Okay. Uh, Amrik says, what did you learn from it? Uh, Amrik, uh, possible, but that's answered in part two. Okay. All right. Uh, Riam, be confident. Master your fear of speaking tomorrow. And that's one tip that I can give you. Okay. Um, Rajveer, yeah, that's definitely possible. So... How did your classmates um, feel 
about swimming in the ocean? Yeah, it's possible. That could be another question. Okay, uh, so that's a that's a good possible question that they might follow up with. Okay, so uh, here we go. Answer this one for me. So the examiner says, okay, and how did your classmates feel about swimming in the ocean? Give me a good answer for this one. Okay. Meanwhile, while you're thinking about that, I'll read a nice comment from Marios GR. Mario says, I took the IELTS exam a couple of weeks ago. I scored an overall band seven, and now I moved to the UK to continue my studies. Thank you very much, sir, for your help. Marios, thank you for coming back and sharing your experience. I'm glad to have been a guide in your journey, and um, I wish you the best in your studies in the UK. I hope you uh, do really well. It's a great country, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Marios, if you don't mind, send me an email and I'd love to get your testimonial. I'd love to put your testimonial up on our website if you have a minute. So uh, that would be wonderful. Okay. And good luck either way. All right. Okay. So for Dov says most of them were confident as uh, they'd spent quite a bit of time at the pool in my school. Okay, good. Um, Anurpreet says they were amazed and some of them had a hard time because it was also their first experience uh, with the ocean and aquatic animals. Yeah, so it'd probably be a mix, right? Some students would be a bit more confident, those that have more experience. Some would be similar to what I experienced, be a little bit more scared, okay? So Luchika Mutha says, well, my classmates were very confident as they were well-trained uh, for swimming. And in fact, most of them were eager to swim in the ocean. Okay, yeah, sure. So uh, many of my classmates were quite uh, eager to swim in the ocean as they had spent much time uh, at swimming pools and are confident uh, swimmers. However, there were a few like me who were definitely uh, more scared of the water. In fact, one student didn't really join in on the activities because she hadn't learned how to swim. Uh, so she spent her time collecting seashells and doing some other uh, seaside activities. All right, I never like using the word things. I'd rather repeat the word activities. Okay. Here we go. So repeat after me. Um, how did your classmates feel about swimming in the ocean? Many of my classmates were quite eager to swim in the ocean. I'm reflecting the question right away. How did they feel about swimming in the ocean? They're eager to swim in the ocean. Eager means to, ex to be excited, to really want to do it. Okay. All right. So again, this is speaking. So make sure to speak and repeat. One more time from the question, practice questions also. So how did your classmates feel about swimming in the ocean? Many of my classmates were quite eager to swim in the ocean as they had spent much time at swimming pools and are confident swimmers. However, 
there were a few like me who were definitely more scared of the water. In fact, one student didn't really join in on the fun because she hadn't learned how to swim. So she spent her time collecting seashells and doing some other seaside activities. Okay. All right. Now, if you can't follow with my speed, don't worry. Go back and practice after this video is recorded. You will find it on our channel later. So you can go back and then just repeat and repeat and repeat and work on your fluency. Okay. All right. So this is the way that the IELTS speaking interview will work. You'll give your part two response, the long response. Then when you finish, the examiner will ask you a couple of related questions before getting into part three. So at this point, the examiner will say, okay, let's talk more about emotions, right? Because part two was about being scared. So now the examiner will say, let's talk more about emotions. Uh, what are common situations when people feel frightened? Okay. Give me a nice answer, explanation, example, and connect. So this is strategy. Give an answer plus explanation plus example and connect to part two. Okay, that's what you should think about. All right, I see lots of answers coming up. Janiel says, uh, in my point of view, natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunamis, thunderstorms, and dangerous accidents like a uh, blast of a glass cylinder at home, a car accident, these are common events when people are extremely scared. Last year in Beirut, um, there was a gigantic explosion at a firecracker factory when residents uh, were really frightened by the boom. Okay, Janiel, uh, yeah, not bad. Why are people scared when, when this happens? Think about the why question, okay? Ois says there are many cases which make individuals scared, such as fear of failure in school, loss of a job, some chronic disease, death, uh, as I was terrified uh, sinking in the Indian Ocean for the first time being there. Good. Okay. For Dob says, aside from swimming in the ocean for the first time, uh, people are scared when they're starting new activities like scuba diving, uh, jumping from a high cliff, or experiencing uh, turbulence during a flight. Okay, good. Good list for Dob. So for Dob, smart. What you're doing is you're using the ideas from part two in your answers and that's really clever okay so this is another huge tip and for Dobbs is doing a great job of doing this so this tip here is remember your planning see I told you that planning would be very important remember you're planning in the one minute uh, for part two to give answers for part three. Okay, everybody is picking up on this tip. It's a really important one. A lot of people have some really good ideas for their part two cue card that they can use for their answers in part three, and then they forget about that in part three, and they get stuck for answers. So first step, just think about, hey, what was I thinking about for part two? Maybe I can use that information here in part three. Everybody good on that? Yeah? You got that? Yes? Janiel Rajvir say, yes, I got it. Okay, so remember we talked about turbulence on the plane. Okay, we talked about a car accident. So we basically had these ideas already stored up. Okay, good. All right, fantastic. Good, so now a lot of you are like, yeah, Eldor says, clear. Dear Beck says, got it, okay? Yeah, so don't get stuck for ideas, especially when you've already created them, right? Hollywood Explainer says people get petrified when they see uh, different things which can cause them harm, uh, different dangers. Like many people get scared when they see a crocodile or wild animals. Okay, 
Yeah, sure. So you have some explanation there, Hollywood Explainer, and that's good. It's part of your uh, name, Hollywood Explainer, so it makes sense that you put explanations into your answers. <laughs> so, okay, anyway, uh, joke for me. Okay, so um, yeah, that's good. So answer, explain, example, connect to part two, and remember part two. So what are common situations when people feel frightened? Okay, so aside uh, from drowning in the ocean as i had just mentioned previously people are petrified petrified is a great word for being scared uh, petrify means if you want to know specifically petrify means to turn into stone you're so scared that you're just we also say deer caught in headlights. It's an idiom. Petrified, turned to stone. You're super scared. Can't move your legs. Okay, so aside from drowning in the ocean, as I just mentioned previously, people are petrified when they are in situations that are out of their control. These may include natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis, car accidents, or turbulence on a plane. I was mortified when I experienced turbulence for the first time flying to Beijing. Okay, uh, there is another interesting word. Since you're learning the word petrified, you might as well learn mortified. Anybody know what the definition of mortified is? It's even, it's even more than petrified. So petrified means you're so scared that you're turned to stone. Mortified means you're so scared that you are scared to... Anybody know what it means? The specifically, the definition, without looking. Petrified, mortified. Yeah, Adelia, very good. <laughs> Amrik says, super scared. Yeah, Adelia, very good. Scared to death. Yeah, it's scared to death. Okay, mortified. Mortal means to be able to die. Okay, so scared to death. Very good. All right, um, so repeat after me. Here we go. Um, what are common situations when people feel frightened? Aside from drowning in the ocean, as I had just mentioned previously, people are petrified when they are in situations that are out of their control. These may include natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis, car accidents, or turbulence on a plane. I was mortified when I experienced turbulence for the first time flying to Beijing. Great. Okay, uh, here we go, everyone. Next question, let's keep rocking and rolling and building our momentum, our fluency, our vocabulary. What can people do to reduce fear in everyday situations such as exams? So being scared of an exam. And I think some of you were asking, um, what should I do? I'm so scared I have my speaking exam tomorrow. So here's some tips for that as well. Okay, some tips to reduce fear. Oh, it says the best way to manage fear is through facing the problem due uh, to fear, especially the kind of fear that relates to exams. Raising self-confidence and focus is key and sleeping enough. Okay. Hadith says to overcome fear of everyday life, uh, individuals can follow some techniques such as having a balanced diet, 
uh, talking to friends, just like what I did when I was frightened. Very good, Hadith. I was wondering if somebody would connect. I mean, we answered this question kind of with the part two follow-up question, right? So Mandeep says, excuse me, sir, yesterday the examiner asked me, what is the meaning of your name? How do I speak? How do I answer that question? Well, if you don't know the meaning of your name, uh, then just simply say, I'm not sure. I've never actually looked at the meaning of my name, uh, so I couldn't possibly tell you. But if you know the meaning of your name, then you should say, uh, like, for example, my name is Adrian, and the name Adrian means a man from the dark sea, from the Adriatic Sea, okay, uh, located off the coast of Italy, which makes sense because of the former emperor of Rome, Hadrianus. All right, so if you know the meaning of your name, then answer and give the meaning of your name. It's good to know the meaning of your name in English, so if you don't know it, I recommend looking it up. All right, so let's get back to point here. Again, what can people do to reduce fear in everyday situations, such as exams? Abhishek says the person can minimize their terror uh, from day-to-day -day situations, especially exams, through gaining knowledge from the internet as books and books, as well as taking classes from experts. Okay, good. All right. Jagannathan says... One should always keep in mind that life is filled with uncertainties. One should trust oneself and continue to do their job. Uh, Jagannathan, it's quite general. It's quite um, broad scope. That kind of an answer usually doesn't score better than a 6.5, maybe a 7 at best. Okay. Uh, high band answers are specific, specific to the question. Okay. So here... Um, well, uh, in order to reduce um, common daily anxiety, um, such as fear of exams, uh, people can practice breathing techniques. as what I did uh, before going snorkeling. Also, it is important to be prepared and do research uh, whenever uh, possible. And uh, last but not least, people need to visualize their success as this will give them tons of confidence. Uh, before doing this IELTS exam, I visualized myself acing the test there you go visualization the power of vision never forget it you can trick your brain into being confident okay visualize see yourself succeed uh here we go eh how can i get a high score in speaking follow the steps i'm teaching you and visualize yourself succeed okay uh here we go repeat after me what can people do to reduce fear in everyday situations such as exams? Well, in order to minimize common daily anxiety, such as fear of exams, people can practice breathing techniques as what I did before going snorkeling. Also, it's important to be prepared and do research whenever possible. And last but not least, people need to visualize their success as this will give them tons of confidence. Before doing this IELTS exam, I visualized myself acing the test. Okay, so answer, explanations, and examples. You see all of that in here, okay? This is roughly about one response in the chat. So this is what you need to do. You need to give an answer that is reflecting the question, 
okay? You need to make connections to part two. Here I'm making that connection when I talked about snorkeling and the follow-up question. And then here I did an explanation of why we visualize. We visualize success because it gives confidence. And then an example of that before doing this IELTS exam, I visualized myself acing the test. Complex sentence uh, with before doing this IELTS exam. Okay. Next question. Do you believe that positive emotions have physical consequences? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that one. Carolina says that would take two chats. Um, po quite possibly, Carolina, quite possibly. Uh, one, to, one chat to one and a half chat, Carolina, generally speaking. Okay. Um, okay, do you believe that positive emotions have physical consequences? Pranav says positive emotions absolutely have physical consequences as I am the living example for this. I hold myself together and prepare myself for snorkeling activities by being confident. Uh, Pranav, really good. That's exactly what you want to do. I like your response. You're uh, not paraphrasing all of the words, but your answer is very accurate. And that can definitely get you a band eight, band nine. Okay. Uh, Bijay, yeah, you can definitely make up answers and speak confidently. I make up answers in these classes all the time, okay? Uh, you can certainly train yourself to make, uh, make up good answers and you'll do really well. Sometimes making up the answer is actually easier than telling the truth. Uh, sometimes the truth can be really difficult in the IELTS. They don't care if it's the truth. They just care about your English, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, absolutely, positive emotions can boost people's energy and immune system, and these prevent them from contagious diseases like the COVID-19. Also, being in a good mood um, lowers the chances of stroke and high blood pressure. Beautiful answer, Ferdovs. Beautiful answer. Okay. This is why it's advisable that people watch comedy films and read positive books because you're going to live longer. Uh, Carolina says, yes, absolutely. I believe and I know that positive and negative emotions can have physical impacts. I believe that people who are positive tend to be healthier and live longer than pessimists. Uh, my mother is... Uh, and I don't see the rest of it yet, Carolina, so I'm waiting for it. Vaishnavi says, yes, certainly, I do believe that being optimistic will definitely influence a person's physical health positively. Uh, people can be more stress-free and live longer. Yeah, okay. Yosef says, as a psychologist, I believe this. Okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, the mind and body are connected, right? So certainly... I'm a strong believer in that the mind and body are connected. So uh, positive emotions have a very good effect on physical health. such as uh, lower uh, blood pressure and better digestion. So it pays to be an optimist. All right. You don't always have to give very lengthy answers, but you should always be working towards fluency. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, do you believe that positive emotions have physical consequences? Certainly. I'm a strong believer in that the mind and body are connected. So 
Positive emotions have a very good effect on physical health, such as uh, lower blood pressure and better digestion. So it pays to be an optimist. How about negative ones? Okay. Yeah, well, yes, of course. Um, this is somewhat the inverse of uh, being on the sunny side of life as pessimistic attitude leads to stress which in turn leads to high blood pressure pressure and unchecked this will eventually lead to a stroke or a heart attack. So again, I reiterate, it pays to be an optimist. Okay, so here I didn't take a break uh, to read answers because I wanted to show you that when you're in the flow, and you're thinking about question to question and the connections to questions, you can make really strong cohesion among your answers, okay? And that's what you want to work on when you're really going for those high band scores like band 8, band 9, is creating that absolute in-depth cohesion. Now, I will look at some answers in a moment, but first, read both of these responses with me, one after the other. Okay, and then I'll read some responses as well. So here we go, okay? Let's jump back to the top here. Uh, do you believe that positive emotions have physical consequences? Certainly, I'm a strong believer in that the mind and body are connected. So positive emotions have a very good effect on physical health, such as lower blood pressure and better digestion. So it pays to be an optimist. Well, how about negative ones? Well, yes, of course, this is somewhat the inverse of being on the sunny side of life as pessimistic attitude leads to stress, which in turn leads to high blood pressure and unchecked, this will eventually lead to a stroke or heart attack. So again, I reiterate, it pays to be an optimist. Okay, so that's really strong cohesion there and flow between the two questions. All right. Okay, let me read a few of your responses. Here we go. Anna says, I strongly believe that if individuals think in a negative way, their, thing, their thoughts bring on negative effects. Like what, Anna? Give me some examples. Give me a bit more explanation. Okay? Don't stop there. All right? Uh, Jay says, yeah, surely negative emotions have adverse effects on one's health as it may lead people to overthink and might uh, get them into a loop. Uh, which can ultimately cause different uh, problems mentally and physically. Um, yeah, the word you're looking for, Bajay, is ruminate. Okay? Uh, ruminate is a verb, and it means to spin negative thoughts in one's mind over and over again. Okay? So ruminate, there's a nice high-level vocabulary for you, okay? Uh, and it is not good to ruminate on negative thoughts, okay? You don't want to ruminate on that. You ruminate on positive thoughts. It doesn't have to be negative, okay? So to spin, uh, usually people do negative, but you could spin positive thoughts as well, okay? Or negative. Uh, don't spin negative thoughts. Spin positive thoughts, okay? All right. Rajveer says, well, yes, uh, this is a rainy, this is the rainy side of life as a pessimistic attitude leads to psychological ailments such as a brain hemorrhage and depression, as well as low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, Rajveer. Now, remember, physical ailments, right? Low self-esteem and depression aren't necessarily physical. They're mental ailments, right? So stick to physical. B.O. Dune says, uh, similarly, negative uh, uh, thoughts have negative outcomes, and this can have grave in, uh, consequences on the individual's 
uh, physical situation. Okay, uh, Biodun, uh, what do you mean? What kind? Okay, so give me more details. All right, and you're doing a good job. So at this point, uh, the examiner is going to say, hey, let's talk about stress. And then I'll ask you some more questions about stress. Like, why do you think people become stressed in certain situations? Or many individuals believe that stress is the number one killer of people. Do you agree with this idea? These questions, I will leave for you students to practice with each other or on your own. You can record your answers to these three questions on your mobile phone. Please record them in MP3 or convert them in MP3 format. You can send your responses to my email in MP3 or link the file to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly give you uh, a score estimate. So I'll let you know roughly what band score you can expect for that. Uh, you can go back to those questions later by checking the end of this video. You are very, very welcome, Pachu and Abhishek. It was good to have you in the class. Van Nguyen, good to have you in the class as well. Eugen, I love the emojis. Uh, thank you for sharing that. It's kind of cheering up my weekend. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend, everyone, and I hopefully will see you on Wednesday. That's the start of our live classes for the week, Wednesday to Saturday at this time and earlier, one hour before for the members chat classes. Remember, everyone, you can practice speaking with other students on our websites. You can book a speaking interview practice with our professionals. And you can get our premium package from aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world. Stay positive. Stay healthy. Bye for now. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest.